I think the first thing we've got to do is, is think about the, the loss of life that we had yesterday and remember that they were people that lost their lives, people that were fleeing horrendous situations, potentially, in countries that they've come from. And then we've got to understand the journey by which they end up coming to the UK or end up getting to the situation that they found themselves in yesterday, that terrible situation. And one of the big problems here is it, the, the, the sort of securitisation, the way the government manages the process of allowing people into this country can be so harsh, it forces people into situations where they end up, for example, having to cross the channel and putting themselves what in do you extraordinary mean harsh? risk. Well, making it very difficult to, in the process of applying, say, for asylum, very difficult to meet certain criteria so that they're legitimately allowed into the country. And when people are, are faced with that kind of regime, they're pushed into situations where they have to seek other ways to get into the country. Well, that en ends up what's happening. Ali, your view? Uh, well, I, I sort of don't quite follow, because if they're genuinely fleeing persecution, I would have thought that they would want to just seek safe harbour in the first safe country, inverted commas, that they land in. The situation that we've got here is that people are willingly trying to cross that channel, and it's absolutely tragic what happened yesterday. People putting their lives at risk, being, uh, being subjected to this uh, by unscrupulous uh, people smugglers that are charging up to £6,000 uh, for this crossing. And it's fundamentally absolutely a travesty what's happening here. But I think Laurie's right in this sense that they do feel that if they make that crossing, the chances of them coming in are higher. Now, how do we get around this? There has to be more coordination with the French. Uh, the Home Secretary has given them 54 million. Uh, they've been trying to do increased uh, drone um, surveillance on, on the coast. It's not worked. Uh, Pretty Patel a few months ago was talking about hiring big boats to make waves in the ocean to try and push boats back towards France. That didn't work. There was talk about uh, processing them offshore. That didn't work either. But I do think that at the moment there has to be a situation where the two sides come together. And there is a lack of trust, Michelle, at the moment between the British and French sides, partly over fish, uh, partly over the Northern Ireland Protocol. So it's not the best time. Our relations are not the best. And you also have to look at this through the lens of domestic politics. Emmanuel Macron has got a presidential election next April. He wants to show that he's tough. Boris Johnson has got his own domestic problems here, with 70%, 77% of Tory voters now seeing the migrant crisis as a serious issue of credibility in the government. So I think both sides have got their own issues, but they need to come to the table to try and resolve this in a meaningful way. And do you think they can resolve it and resolve it? I mean, to me, this is an immediate problem. So it's all well and good having these long-term strategies of what we do. But in the here and the now, you know, we've just explained um, the awful situation that happened yesterday. And yet still, with the knowledge of that, people are still carrying on, Ellie. Well, I agree with you that in the immediate term, what we need to do is make sure that organisations like the RNLI and the Navy are making sure that people who are at risk at sea are uh, safe and they're taken to a safe place and that they're treated if they have any medical issues. That is definitely the first thing that we should be doing. But do you think that's encouraging, though, this situation? Because the fact that people know that if they can get into English waters, they know that they will be essentially rescued. Don't you think that that is encouraging people to make this crossing? I think, you know... Um... When you, you've, you've got children, you know, there's a pregnant woman on that boat, there were people on there with their children. People don't do that um, unless there's a really strong reason to do that. P the, those people were coming here seeking safety, and I think as caring people, it's our responsibility to show them some compassion. Well, they were safe in France, though, wasn't there? Mm -hmm. Well, the reason... So I think... I'm really glad you said that, actually, because there is a myth that I think we need to bust about uh, people who come to this country seeking safety, and that's that... Uh, they don't go to the nearest safe country. Actually, most people do. Those countries uh, have the biggest number of migrants. Jordan, for example, has some of the highest numbers of refugees in the world. France has more refugees than we do. Um, but it is a safe country for them, isn't people it? People coming here, yes, but they come to this country because uh, they have family connections here, because they can speak English and maybe they can't speak French. And actually, I think we need to ask... Why are people peddling this false idea that everybody is coming to this country? And I think it's to distract but us. But who said that? You just did, and I Ali just did. I did, I did hang on. Sorry. I did not Therapy say thing. everybody is coming to this but country, because that would saying, be stupid. You are saying, I didn't say that. You are saying, why aren't they staying in France? Yeah, I'm I am saying, saying that. Most people are. But the people who do come here come here because they have good reasons for coming here. And I think by arguing that they should stay elsewhere, we're actually... We're doing that in order to... Uh, 
be, to not meet our duty as caring people, to welcome people here and to quickly integrate them into our community so they can rebuild their lives. I, I, yeah, I disagree. Firstly, I, I never said that uh, they're all coming here at all. Uh, secondly, we do have a long history. But I think you need to be really careful then with what you say, because no, you know a lot, said, of, a lot of a lot of a lot of people who want who want these uh, at-risk people to come to harm do peddle these myths. But that no one wants at-risk people saying, to come to harm. I don't think ever. Of course, there are people who want. So, Ellie, are you telling me really that people want 27 people to die in the ocean? Really? Yes. I mean, Katie Hopkins only a few years ago wrote a column for the most popular newspaper in this country, advocating that very thing. But hang on. Yes. Hang on a second. Can I just say? Sorry, after you. Hang on a second, because I think we need to be very clear here, Ellie, because what you're suggesting, and I think it's actually quite wrong. You're suggesting, and never mind Katie Hopkins or anyone like that. You use the example of myself and Ali. Neither of us want anybody to come to harm. In fact, actually, I want people to stop making this crossing because by doing so, you are indeed putting yourself at risk of harm, especially when I look at children. I am a mum. When I see children being put onto these boats, I really want them to stop doing it. So I absolutely don't want anyone to come to harm. Ali, I know that you don't want that either, so I'm not really sure I'm, where that I'm really glad you said that, actually, because I think we definitely can agree on that. And I think the one thing that we've learned in all of human history is that people move. Uh, they move, like I moved from Wales to London because I had hopes and dreams. I wanted something bigger than I could get at home, so I moved to London 10 years ago. You know, people move... But it was legal this, for you to do so. People move from the... Yeah. yeah, but the problem when we talk about that, the problem that we, that we don't acknowledge is that it's very, very hard for people to come here legally. And every time we put up a new law and every time we try to stop these channel crossings, a people smuggler, one of the people who's been arrested today in connection with this, rubs their hands with glee because people will move and they always have, and that is a part of human history. It is what makes us brilliant, is our ability to dream and our ability to chase those dreams and to do brave things. People move, they always have, and we need to make that safe for them. That's the only solution to this, is making that safe. So if you really do say you don't want people to come to harm, which I do agree, I'm, like, I do believe you about that. You know, we've got a few of these things, and I know that you really feel these things deeply, so I do, I do recognise that. But I think, really, the only solution to that is let people come on a ferry, let them come on a plane, and then make sure that we have a fair and efficient asylum system that processes people quickly so they can rebuild their lives. So you want anyone to be able to come as long as they come in a safer route than this, and then once they get here, we sort it out from there? I think that, you know, we have the means uh, to look after people in this country. And we what we're Ellie, talking about we have, here... We have a, a homeless issue. Let me finish. We have, let me finish. No, because you, 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 you do make your points and you take quite a long time and there's quite a lot of people on the panel, Ellie. So, anyway, I'm going to shut up. Ali, you come no, back no, in. Look, I, look I, think, I think Ellie makes uh, some, 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 some important points, but I think there is a distinction to be made between people genuinely fleeing persecution and people who are economic migrants. We have always had a long tradition in this country of taking people who are generally fleeing persecution. Look at the, uh, the uh, Ugandan Asians that fled under the regime of Idi Amin. We did that. We've always had this tradition. What we can't have is a situation where certain people are abusing the system. I'm not saying that the people who died yesterday or the majority of the 25,000 that have tried to make this crossing this year are economic migrants, but certainly some of them probably are. They shouldn't be ab abusing the asylum system and paying money to unscrupulous people smugglers to do that. And also the other thing is, on this position of uh, people going to the first safe country, when we were members of the EU, under the Dublin Convention, if you went into a country and you were not allowed there and you'd cross through another safe country on your way to that country, you were sent back. Now we're not in the EU anymore, so we have to rely on our relationship with France to ensure that these people are sent back. Now the French have got their own issues, got an election coming up. French uh, voters don't particularly want uh, loads of asylum seekers coming into their own country. They do make it very difficult. It's a lot less welcoming uh, than actually the UK is. And in fact, the French themselves, the French authorities are saying, they're blaming the UK in part, saying, you're making it too attractive and too easy for people to come. You should be being much, much tougher on them so that it's less attractive to Well, let's over. bring Laurie back in. Let, uh, this, this point about where people are going in the first instance is really important. And let, let's just imagine a situation where there was a civil war in Britain, right? And a, th and a half of the population, about 30 million people, had to leave this country because it was so awful. Now, the vast majority of these people would end up staying within the UK. That's what happens elsewhere in the world. About four out of five people end up staying and suffering within the region in which the bad thing has happened. Then, loads of us would get over to France, right? 
and probably about four million of us would remain in France itself, the next nearest place. And that's similar, say, Turkey. It holds about four million refugees mm -hmm. at the moment from, from various situations in the Middle East and North Africa. Then a small number of people would then start to try and go to the places where they have the greatest connection to. As Ellie was saying, they speak the language, they have connections to family and that kind of stuff. So let's say we went to try and go to some of the African countries that speak English as one of the primary languages. And then when we, we try to get in, but the, the way in which we get in, the, the paperwork we have to fill out, the reasons we can have that are legitimate, are so tough. But we're just, we had this war in our country. We want to get to the family members in that country. And also it's the place that we've heard most about, we have the greatest connections to. How do you know these people have all got family connections, by the way? Well, you ask them. There's been lots of... There's been lots of, uh, of course, yeah. I mean, yes. if you ask, if I want to go somewhere and someone says to me, is your family there? Of course I'm going to say, time, yes, they are. Why are there so many men coming across on time, their own, by the way? And, can someone time, explain that to me? Time, if they're genuinely fleeing persecution, wouldn't you go with your family? Time and time again. People often go first and then they send Yeah, but why do they go first? If you're genuinely fleeing because, persecution, because women and would you not want to take your wife and child with you? Well, because what they're hoping is they can go to, come to the so country, how much, they how much danger are they here, in? and then Hang on a bit, but we're, children. We're just, we've just extrapolated up there. We, now, now we're talking as if it's only men or majority men. Well, or, they are or that's the image we have in it our minds. But a lot, a lot of, of But that's reality, though, isn't it? The, it's not an image. That is reality. But you concede that point. That's not an image. That's not a policy. I have not counted and... And assess the gender balance of Well, the 27 people who died yesterday, refugees. there were seven women, supposedly, refugees. right? And the rest were, we assume, men. Every organisation that's working well, with those who are seeking to escape the conditions that have led them to, to seek asylum in the UK, the United Nations and the, the, the refugee rights organisations in the United Nations, the people who are working on the ground, say time and time again that the, the harsh regime when it comes to being able to get into this country is a contributor toward... The criminalisation, the, the gangs that then are exploiting people, the fact that people go out in the middle of winter in one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world, right, and end up getting themselves Do you think it trouble. should be rigorous to get into a country? Or do you think it should be easy? Do you think the process should be rigorous, um, uh, in-depth, all that stuff, challenging? Or do you think it should be lax and yeah, easy? Yeah, of, of, of course there should be elements of rigour in it. Yeah, yeah, there's, it doesn't need to be either or of those two things. An issue becomes when you, you conflate what's really going on, that people are seeking to come to this country for a variety of reasons, not just because, you know, someone's handing out leaflets in a country and saying, you know, you should go to Britain, they're a soft touch. Um, we need to look at all the different reasons. We need to provide the ability for people to be able to come and seek asylum in this country who have got a variety of reasons and connections and other things. And we need to then ensure that the, the passage for those who at the moment are seeking it across the channel is not as dangerous as it currently is. And often all of these things get mixed together and it sometimes sounds as if some people are saying, let everyone in, build a bridge and just let them walk over. And the others over here are saying, let them drown in the channel. And we're not allowing the, the nuances in between those two positions, which hopefully no one holds those extremes necessarily. We need to explore those things, you know? Yeah, and you guys are getting in touch as well. Um, they're asking how... I mean, I've got so many emails just actually flying through on this topic. There seems to be a, a general sentiment... Uh, one guy just got in touch and said, how are we asking, uh, Dennis, sorry, I should use your name, Dennis, um, you're saying, why are people calling to have British patro uh, officers patrolling the French coast when we don't even seem to have enough to patrol our own streets or our own waters? There seems to be this whole sentiment, um, if I'm trying to paraphrase, I can't read, obviously, every single thing that comes in. The question is, I mean, how? No one seems to have the answer as to what we can actually do. I think, Ellie, a lot of people are coming back to some of the points that you've made as well, which is, you know, that we have to be able to get, you know, as many people in as safely as we can, as often as we can. People are rightly pointing out here that we have homeless situations, doctors, uh, surgeries that are bulging at the seams, schools that are bursting, uh, etc. I think we and should address all of that as well. Go on, then. Um, well, I think, no, I mean, I think we should... I oh, think you think we, we should address we, them? Yeah, I thought you meant on this panel should, we'll fix it. We can and should fix the homelessness problem. We did that during the pandemic, you know, um, before, about 10 years ago, the uh, funding for the NHS was much higher than it is now. We can put it back to that. We can give the NHS more money. We've done it In very recently. In the simple recently. answer to this, again. I mean, obviously... I think, so I don't think we should say... I, I totally agree with your audience, basically, who are saying we have all these problems in our own country. 
that we need to fix. I totally agree with that, but I think that as caring people, we can also treat those who come to this country seeking safety with the compassion that we have. Goodness me, Ellie, I think we treat them with a lot of compassion. We help them into here, we put them up in hotels, we give them money, we give them food, we but give I them legally. Happened, I think we treat them with an awful lot of compassion. What's happened yesterday has shown that actually we don't do that. We actually create a situation where... Hang on, they died in French waters. They didn't die yeah, if, in English if you, waters. If there was a way of them getting here safely, it wouldn't, wouldn't have happened. I um, think no one can dispute that well, I I, you know if they were able I think I think whatever your views on this otherwise whatever your political views I think we can all agree that if people had the choice between taking a safe route on a ferry knowing that they would they would arrive here and then they would meet a fair asylum system that would process them quickly I think we can all agree that most people would sensibly do that and not risk their lives on a tiny boat especially if they have children with them and especially if they're pregnant because we've, we've just seen what happens when, when people have only that option. Ali, um, isn't an idea, and I'm sure it must be more complex than I'm about to present or else it would have been done, mm -hmm. but isn't an idea just to say anyone that enters this country via this route, mm -hmm. you will not get asylum. You just will not. You have to follow an official, recognised, um, proper route. If you do this, if you enter this country this way, we just will not give you asylum. The problem... What I, am I, I missing? No, no, you're not missing anything. And I think the National Anti- and Borders Bill that uh, the Home Secretary is trying to take through the House of Commons is going to be trying to tighten up and indeed make it much more difficult. And also, as part of that, to Ellie's point, try and encourage people to apply directly for asylum from the regions which they're in try and actually make more of those safe routes available to people. But the problem, Michelle, is that when people actually land on the coast, you've then got a problem to deal with, right? What are you actually then going to do with them? Regardless of whether you say that we're not going to be granted asylum here, you then have a problem to deal with on your shores. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.